Welcome to the Madison Motor Podcast special edition series where I go over every 2023 men's college basketball conference tournament. This one is going to be the ACC held at Greensboro Coliseum in Greensboro, North Carolina. This is always a fun tournament. Um, a lot of bubble teams with a lot on the line. Um, this is the first monster one of all of them. Uh, this all gets underway Tuesday, March 7th, three games. And then second round Wednesday, March 8th, quarterfinals Thursday, March 9th, semifinals Friday, March 10th, and the championship game Saturday, March 11th at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. All right, so the seedings for this tournament. Your one seed, the Miami Hurricanes, 24-6 and six overall, 15-5 and five in conference play, currently 16th in the AP poll. Your number two seed is your 13th ranked Virginia Cavaliers, 23 and 6 overall, 15 and 5 in conference play. Your three seed is the Clemson Tigers, 22 and 9 overall, 14 and 6 in conference play. Your four seed is the Duke Blue Devils, 23 and 8 overall, 14 and 6 in conference play. Your five seed is number 25, Pitt, 21 and 10 overall, 14 and 6 in conference play. Your six seed is NC State, 22 and 9 overall, 12 and 8 in conference play. Um, your seventh seed is the North Carolina Tar Heels, 19-12 overall, 11-9 in conference play. Your eighth seed is the Syracuse Orange, 17-14 overall, 10-10 in conference play. Your ninth seed is Wake Forest, 18-13 overall, 10-10 in conference play. Your tenth seed is Boston College, who I think is overachieved this year, 15-16 overall, 9-11 in conference play. Your 11th seed is Virginia Tech, 18 and 13 overall, 8 and 12 in conference play. 12th seed Florida State, 9 and 22, dismal year for them, 7 and 13 in conference play. Your 13th seed is Georgia Tech, the Yellow Jackets, 14 and 17 overall, 6 and 14 in conference play. 14, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, 11 and 20 overall, 3 and 17 in conference play. And 15, the atrociously dismal Louisville Cardinals, 4 and 27 overall, 2 and 18 in conference play so a lot of subplots in this tournament obviously some overachieving teams clemson pitt boston college even how are they going to do underachieving teams obviously carolina leads the pack there nc state i feel like hmm, sounds right um virginia tech i'd say is an underachieving team at north carolina even syracuse for that matter i feel like it's underachieving obviously the two there's three obvious ones florida state notre dame and louisville i feel like if all Massively underachieved this year, especially Florida State. Um, so, let's get into it. Tuesday, March 7th, 2 o'clock Eastern on the ACC Network. 13 seed Georgia Tech, 12 seed Florida State. Georgia Tech, we talked about. Josh Pastner's still there, amazingly enough. Two guys averaging double figures a game, led by Miles Kelly. And Florida State, we talked about them. What a terrible year for Leonard Hamilton's crew. Um, four guys averaging double figures a game, led by Matthew Cleveland. I project the Seminoles by two, total 143, and the 20th, so therefore I have the Seminoles advancing. The second of three first-round games, 15 seed Louisville, 10 seed Boston College. Louisville, um, two guys averaging double figures a game, led by L. Ellis at 17-7 a game, um, BC, as I mentioned, a big overachiever this year, in my mind, um, led by um, someone who I feel like um, has been at BC for a long time. Um, uh, um. Ashton Leonard on BC. I feel like he's been on that team forever. Makai Ashton Le- uh, Langford. I feel like he's been there forever. Um, I project BC 9.2 to the 137 and 19.20. So therefore, if BC advancing, and I think that there's a possibility that, as controversial as it could be, Kenny Payne will be one and done at Louisville. And the third of three first-round games, 14-seed Notre Dame 
11 seed Virginia Tech, battle of two underachievers. Um, obviously, Mike Brace swan song here. Um, uh, Nate Lazowski leads the way for um, Notre Dame. And then Vatek, another underachiever in my, uh, mine with Mike Young at the helm. Um, two really good scorers in Grant Basile and... Sean Padula. Um, I project Virginia Tech 7.8, total 142 and four fifths. So, therefore, I have Virginia Tech moving on. And now the question is, does Mike Bray retire from coaching altogether or will he be a hot name at, say, Texas if uh, Terry doesn't um, keep the job or elsewhere, like a St. John's or a Georgetown, something like that. All right. Second round, Wednesday, March 8th, noon, ESPN, 9 seed Wake Forest, 8 seed Syracuse. Um, Wake's a middle of the pack team this year. They have a really good score in Tyree Appleby, um, averaging almost 19 a game. And Syracuse, obviously, um, three guys averaging double figures a game, led by Joseph Girard and... Judah Mintz, um, I project Syracuse 1.8, total 148 and 7 tenths. Um, I do think there's a chance that Wake wins this game. Um, I think it'd be a bigger story if Syracuse lost rather than if they won, honestly. Although, if they won this game and lost to uh, Miami, they'd be a non-story. But if they upset Miami somehow and won this game and are in the semis, then they're... um, then, like, you're getting ideas potentially. So, um, Syracuse is someone to keep an eye on for sure. Second of four second round games 12 seat Florida State, five seat Pitt. Um, Pitt, great year for them. Four guys averaging double figures a game, led by Blake Hinson. Uh, Jeff Kappel's done a great job in Pitt this year. Um, I might project them. Five and a half over FSU, so therefore I have Pitt advancing. Third of four second round games, 10 seed Boston College, 7 seed North Carolina. Carolina, obviously, dismal year for a team that um, probably should have won the national championship a year ago, but they blew that second half to Kansas, um, and obviously the Kansas, you can make a case as the best team right now in college basketball. But Carolina, four guys averaging double figures. They still have a good team or a good roster. Caleb Love, Armando Baycott, RJ Davis, and Pete Nance. Um, and Leaky Black's a a pretty good um big guy too. Um, I have Carolina eight and a half over Boston College. I would not be shocked if BC pulled off the upset and they're in the quarters. And we're talking about BC in the quarters in Carolina having the biggest flop year for a preseason number one overall ever. So um, I have Carolina advancing there. And in the last of four second-round games, 11 seed Virginia Tech, 6 seed NC State. NC State's had a nice year. Uh, four guys averaging double figures a game, led by Traquavion Smith, who's awesome, and Jarkel Jr. Um, I project NC State only – by seven tenths. Only by seven tenths. But they're better than Virginia Tech, so I'm going to advance NC State. All right, quarterfinals. Thursday, March 9th, 12 noon. It's either going to ESPN or ESPN2, probably the former, because ACC favoritism at its finest, of course, they're going to be on ESPN. Um, so, in this case, we have 18 Syracuse, one seed Miami. Um, Miami's a really, really good team. They have a great coach in Leonard Hamilton. F- four guys averaging double figures a game, led by Isaiah Wong, averaging almost 16 a game. And then they have Norchad Omir, who is a double-double guy. And I really do like Jordan Miller and Nigel Pack as well. Um, I project them 7.3 over Syracuse, so... This game ends, and then, um, then like Syracuse, oh, disappointing year, but uh, predictable outcome for them. And what's next with Bayham? You're going to hear all the typical Syracuse questions.
Second of four quarterfinal games, five seed Pittsburgh, four seed Duke. Duke, some may say that um, their season's been a disappointment. I'm um, kind of on the fence about that. To me, Duke, year one under, um, under Shire depends on how they do in the NCAA tournament. If they make the sweet if they make the second weekend, I think it's a successful season for Duke. I really do. Um so um a lot of their young guys like Derek Lively have been disappointing this year. But their guy this year is the big man, Kyle Filipkowski, averaging almost a double double, fifteen and nine. I project Duke six and a half over Pitt, so therefore um, I have the former Duke assistant losing to John Shire and Duke in the quarterfinals. So, Jeff Capel, great year for Pitt. They'll be in the tournament in all likelihood. So, uh, um, Duke gets the win here. Um, third of four quarterfinal games on Thursday, March 9th, 17 North Carolina, two seed Virginia. We just saw this matchup um, last weekend, eight days ago, and North Carolina pulled it off. Um, Carolina needs this one. To me, they have to either win the ACC tournament or make the title game to be in the tournament. But they also need help. They need, like, West Virginia to lose its Big 12 opener. Actually, no, I think West Virginia's in regardless. I really do because they beat Kansas State. So maybe, like, Oklahoma State to lose, Texas Tech to lose. Maybe those Big 12 teams need to lose. Not West Virginia, but the other two I just mentioned. Um, They might need some of the Big 10 teams lose, like Rutgers and People like that. Um, so we shall see what happens with Carolina. Um, Virginia, um, very good bounce back this year for that school, being ranked all year long, as I predicted, but they did not win the conference that ended up technically being Miami, although it was a tiebreaker. Um, they are led by... Armand Franklin and Jaden Gardner. Two really, really solid players, obviously. Um, I project Virginia 3.8 over Carolina. So, therefore, I have Carolina's season coming to a disappointing finish, as I don't think they'll make the big dance unless they make the final. Um. Third of four quarterfinal games. Um, six seed NC State, three seed Clemson. Um, Clemson's had a, a fabulous year. I think Brad Brunell probably saved his job. But I think that they got to win this NC State game to ensure of it. So it's not a guarantee that Brunell is going to be back next year. Um, they're led by Hunter Tyson and P.J. Hall. I project Clemson only by forfeits over NC State. So, therefore, I have Clemson into the semifinal. So, Chalk semifinal here. Four seed Duke, one seed Miami. We talked about Duke. They're very talented. Filipowski and Jeremy Roach and Lively and Tyrese Proctor. They're very talented. John Shire's done a nice job, but um, to me, it determines what happens this month, whether Duke, year one, John Shire is a success or not. Um, Miami, I love Wong. I think he's a really good player. I like Miller, Omer, and Pack. They're all good, too. They're very deep, but I actually project Duke as a one-fifth favorite over Miami. So, therefore, I have four-seed Duke upsetting the one-seed in Miami. And then the other semifinal, three seed Clemson, two seed Virginia. Um, I think that if Clemson wins or makes the, the final, it's like Carolina, if they make the final, then they have a legitimate chance to um, be an at-large. Um, we talked about Heisen, or Tyson, um, Hall, Hunter, and Galloway, and then on the other side you have... Um, Franklin Gardner and Clark, um, the Virginia pedigree, um, 
I project Virginia 5.2 over Clemson, so therefore Virginia in the championship to play against number four Duke on Saturday, March 11th, 8.30 on ESPN. Great game. Um, this is a rematch of the game of the controversial um, no call that um, Virginia got away with and won that game several weeks ago. So there's a lot of like bad blood potentially from Duke's side because Duke probably should have won that game, but they didn't. Um, Virginia has the experience. Um, obviously Duke, um, young team, first time coach, um, we'll see. I have Virginia 1.5 over Duke, so therefore I've winning the 2023 ACC tournament, the Virginia Cavaliers, and if they win this tournament, I think at the highest they'd be is a three seed. Um, I think that. A couple of bad losses in conference play, including to Boston College and some other weird results they've had, are cost them a top two seed. Um, other teams I think will be in the tournament. Miami, I think you'll find them in, on the three or the four line. Clemson's on the fence, obviously. I think they have to make the uh, final. Duke, I think, is a lock. Um, they're probably going to be in like that five six range. I think they're going to get a little bit of a uh, favoritism bump from the selection committee because they're Duke. You see this every time when a blue blood is a higher seed than people think because of name recognition. And I think the candidate for this this year is Duke, obviously. Um, Pitt will make it. I think they're going to be like, is, are, they're just destined for the 8-9 game. Maybe they'll be a 7 seed, but Pitt feels like a team to me that's destined for the 8-9 game. Um, NC State. I think the same thing, maybe a little bit better than that. I could see them being like a 7 or an 8, something like that. I made the case for Carolina and Clemson. To me, they have to make their the conference title game and not get blown out in the conference title game um, in order to make the tournament. If they... If one of those teams are in the conference title game and they lose a super close game to Miami or Virginia, um, or in Carolina's case, Duke, um, uh, I could see a world where uh, one of those two teams head to date. And, um, team most likely to surprise that doesn't have a double buy. Hmm. I'm going to exclude North Carolina from this um, because it's, uh, that'll be the easy answer. But to me, the team most likely the surprise potentially could be Boston College. I feel like they're a team that's playing really well right now. Um, uh, they lost their last game, but I really like how they've been playing. So, Boston College is a good one. And I don't mean win the ACC tournament. I just mean the surprise and go a round or two further than expected. We always see that in, in the large conference tournaments. We saw Georgetown win the Big East tournament and get the auto bid in the, um, a few years ago. That's a good example. Um, Oregon, I think, was an auto bid one year in the Pac-12 and then we saw a team in the Big Ten go on a run a few years ago in the Big Ten tournament and get an 11 seed and made it far. I want to say it was, yeah, it was Michigan. There was a year where Michigan wasn't in the field or on the bubble, and then they won a couple games in the Big Ten tournament, the title game, got in, avoided Dayton, and um, they ended up going on a run. So sometimes we see that, too. And the most likely team for that, like the Michigan team I just talked about, would probably be North Carolina based on the the uh the pedigree that they had from a year ago. That would be the Michigan. I forget what year that was. I don't think it was the year where Michigan made the title game. Um I want to say it was the year prior to that. So, oh no, 2018 
Michigan made the title game as a three seed. But there was a year where Michigan was a lower seed and they made it really far in the tournament. It might have been 2017. Let's see. I'm going to look at the bracket. Um, 2017 season. Um, so Michigan was a seven seed. And they made the Sweet 16 and lost to Oregon by one point. Okay. So that... Um, but there was a team that kind of... I mean, 2014 Kentucky was kind of like Carolina from last year. Underachieved in the regular season made the title game. Could be Kentucky this year. We'll get to the SEC in a second. But I feel like the unexpected team to make a run the tournament... And the big dance like, like sneaks into the big dances and at large would be Carolina. But to the odds now, um, and oh, by the way, other postseason tournaments like NIT, my gut tells me that at, uh, Carolina and Clemson will be in the NIT. So will Wake, Syracuse, if I don't think they'll be in a conference. Somewhere. I think Boston College will potentially try to get into the CBI. I could see that. And maybe even Georgia Tech, but probably more likely Boston College than Georgia Tech. I want to see Boston College make one of those smaller tournaments. I really do. All right, the ACC tournament, um, the odds, Duke's the favorite at plus 280. Virginia's 3-1. to one. Miami's plus 340. Carolina and Clemson reach 6-1. to one. NC State's 12-1. to one. Pitt's 14-1. Wake is 40-1. to one. Virginia Tech's 50-1. to one. Syracuse is 100. FSC's 150. Georgia Tech and BC are each 350. And Notre Dame's 500. Louisville's 1,000. Um, so... The long shot pick um, to potentially steal a bid in the ACC. Wake Forest at 40 to 1 is really interesting. I really do. And even Virginia Tech at 50, but Wake at 40, I think, is more likely. I really like Tyree Appleby. So. Wake Forest at 40 to 1 would be like a possible long shot that has some value at 40 to 1. So there you have it for the ACC tournament preview podcast. That was a long one because it's the ACC. Next up will be the Atlantic 10, which I don't think will be as long, but could be a decent one.